I couldn't be found off my big home. The bare necessities of life will come to you. They'll come to you. How do I feel about being uh, a member of the Information Society? That's a difficult question because I didn't know we were in the Information Society. Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. I miss you guys and I am really sorry I have not posted anything here in a while. Um, I did post a little like brief like minute long video a couple weeks back saying hey I'm still here. Um, I just haven't been posting. I have been super busy. I, um, I recently got a promotion at work so that has been keeping me busy and um, I have been working on the app which I'm getting ever closer to releasing. Um, I'm in a closed like alpha testing phase right now trying to make sure I'm working out all the all the big kinks and getting all the usability you know stuff out of the way so I'm really excited to like show that off and get everybody involved if you are interested in getting kind of like a sneak peek or getting involved with the app or the community at large come join us on the discord server that we have going um, it is um, it has moved kind of like from the fishy business name to uh, focus on the app, which um, it is called Tank Tracker. Um, this app is going to allow you to do a lot of stuff, basically keeping track of everything within your tank and uh, sharing it with the world. But <laughs> that's kind of just like super high level view of it. There is so much more that um, it's going to really, you know, provide you and the community on anyone who's interested in using it. But um, yeah, so feel free to join us in the Discord. Um, it is like a fish related Discord server. I promoted it a lot on the uh, this channel before. Um, it's ran by myself and Aaron from Aaron's Aquatics. Um, we're on there like almost 24 seven. Um, so come join us, chat with us and everybody else. We got a great group of people on there, very knowledgeable people. Um, and you know, with regard, regardless if you're new or you know long term uh, veteran of the community, you know you got a place there. A lot of a lot of great people, and we got people from all over uh, the the spectrum of aquarium keeping hobby. So you got like saltwater, freshwater shrimp, so on and so forth. But yeah, come come chat with us. It's it's a great time. It's a lot of fun, and it's a really active community. Always a conversation going on at some point in time. So. <laughs> So that kind of gives you an idea of where I've been at and what I've been doing. Um, I've also been working on my fish room, of course. There's always some project that I'm that I got going on here. Um, so I will be going through kind of everything that I've been doing. Um, again, if you ever are curious and kind of getting the sneak peek and what I'm doing, that I, it's it's a lot of um, it takes a lot of time and effort to put these videos out. So. Um, I'm more active on Instagram and, of course, the Discord server where I'm, I'm there. You can actually come chat with me and all the great people there if you want. Um, but I would say my a lot of my time has been spent actually on my freshwater stuff, trying to move all that around. Um, I've been putting a lot of effort in my saltwater tank, uh, of course, as well. But I've been dealing with some issues there. Uh, mainly, uh, I've had some pest-related issues. Um, I do have Aptasia, but it's like so minimal and I think I've, I've caught, you know, I got it at the very beginning. So I still see them every now and then, but I try to physically remove them as, as best I can. Um, so far, thankfully, that hasn't been the biggest issue. Um, I did notice a type of flatworm in the tank. I'm pretty sure it was a Euphilia eating flatworm. So unfortunately, I think between that and the clownfish, Jack, I've been having a lot of issues with, with my euphilia in general, specifically my torch coral. Um, I've already lost one head. Well, I should say, um, from what I've, I've read and what I understand, it's called a polyp bailout. It's kind of like a last ditch effort for the coral to survive. So I did lose one head while I should say I, I have it. <laughs> I have the tissue, the soft tissue. So it's currently sitting. I, I attempted to try to glue it to a frag plug. Which I read on some forum that someone else did, and they had a success, and it actually grew out, grew out after you know, a couple weeks to a month or something. Um, but uh, it kind of fell off uh, the fr frog plug, and so I have it sitting in a breeder box right now, um, hoping that it'll grow back. But who knows? 
Um, the rest of it, I'm kind of, I've moved it to the, like the center of the tank. There's a lot less flow there. So I'm hoping that it can relax and do its thing and kind of come back. I've also separated the clownfish. He is currently in a breeding container as well. Um, he was also really bothering my Ganyapora. So um, it just, he was bugging everything. So I need to separate him. Um, I might end up giving him back to my friend Josh who uh, gave him to me in the first place to, to care for. But he's been bothering a lot of my coral and I'm just, I. I don't want to risk it. These corals are really expensive. They're rather fragile, and I haven't yet got myself a um, an enemy, which I've been planning on. I just I've been very cautious about it and kind of taking my time, getting used to everything, and then I'll consider that because the last thing I want is to get an an enemy and it um, you know stinging all my coral and killing everything, or getting stuck to a power head or my overflow box and destroying my reef. So. Um, until that point, um, I don't know if I'm going to ever go for a clownfish again, or at least not in the near future, unless I decide to do, um, you know, a clownfish and enemy tank. But I, I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if I'm up to starting another saltwater tank just yet. But knowing me, I'll probably start one eventually. <laughs> the rest of the coral are actually doing fantastic. Uh, most of my other euphilia are doing great. I did have a little trouble with my octospawn, again, with the euphilia eating flatworms. It only really targeted that. And my torch coral, which I have uh, went through a couple um, regiments of dipping them um, and trying to like seclude them. It seems that for the coral that were on the sand bed, um, I had a lot more um, issues with with the flatworms being able to access them more easily. It seems, but once I dip them after a couple weeks and you know put them on either my frag rack or eventually glued them to a rock. I seem to have um, no longer had that issue, and I also ended up getting a six-line ras, which uh, you can see in some of the shots in this video, um, to help eat the flatworms, but I don't know if he's actually done anything or if I eliminated them myself. So I guess time will tell. It seems like I beat it, but we'll see. As you can see, I also branched out into SPS, so I have, uh, I've gotten myself a stylo and a couple of uh, Montes and they're doing pretty good so far so uh, I'm really enjoying it I'm, I love watching them grow even though it's slow so that's kind of the name of the game isn't it like between this and plants I don't know which grows slower <laughs> you will also notice I've been dealing with uh, some algae issues again um, this time around it's the turf algae um, I'm battling it as best I can this has been kind of a, a pain because I can't it, it's even using like a uh, toothbrush to scrub it off isn't nearly as effective as it was on the green hair algae. So I went ahead and ordered me some vibrant uh, aquarium cleaning solution. So it's really just like a mixture of bacteria and uh, like vinegar and other stuff. Uh, so nothing like super heavy chemical wise. So I've, uh, I've seen or read, I should say, uh, a lot of positive reviews of this product. So I'm, I'm eager to try it out and see how well it, you know, works. I did add a tuxedo urchin who has helped maybe a little bit. It's hard to tell, but I mean, it's fun watching him, you know, kind of like walk around the tank. So that's, that's at least cool. I'm not a big fan of buying livestock to help fix problems, but sometimes it's almost necessary, I feel. At least in this case, he has, you know, the urchin has multiple uses and it's, you know, not harmful to anything else. So it's a little different when buying something like a copper band butterfly or something. Unless it's like his, you know, able to eat or is, you know, raised on eating different types of foods. Last thing I would want is to get something that only eats a specific type of thing and then I run out of that thing and that, you know, it, that whatever I get dies. And that's not something I'm, I've ever been a fan of. So I try to avoid that as much as possible, but in these specific cases with um, the urchin and the uh, six line rats. Um, they're both really cool to look at and they will eat other things and hopefully handle the problems that I'm dealing with anyway. Other than that, I'm just, you know, working on maintaining it. I haven't done a water change in quite some time. Um, I am, you know, I, I haven't started utilizing the full um, Triton method, so I'm not dosing a whole lot of anything. I'm dosing a little bit uh, in terms of like a two part uh, solution just to keep my alkalinity and my calcium up, but that's about it. 
So I don't want this entire episode being all about uh, my saltwater tank, so I'm moving on to the freshwater stuff. Um, I have completely redone my racking system, so I took the, the 20 gallon, the two tens, and the other, I think, well, that was about it. <laughs> I took those out and I put them in my closet, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, I moved the 55 down and I replaced the other tanks with two 33 gallon longs. Now the dimension of these 33 gallon tanks are pretty unique while they're as they're longer tanks and it's something that I kind of wanted from the very beginning and I wanted to create some kind of like river like you know hill stream really kind of authentic looking tank at the very beginning so I've always been a real big fan of this now while I didn't do that with the first one I came across some amazing pieces of slate like these large pieces and while you know, they're kind of half a buried in here they kind of oh, it looked like a mountain range to me and so I was kind of going for that and I was just using a lot of the material that I already had or I got for super cheap so the pool filter sand I got for like 10 bucks at an ace hardware and then the other rock I got from um, a fellow Aquarius who was kind of getting out of the hobby and I got this gigantic like uh, I want to say 75 pound bag of this um, like pebble gravel uh, for super cheap. So I, I use that. Um, I also have a bag of like smooth river stone. They're smaller pieces so I didn't really want to use them in here. I might use them for the one above. I haven't decided yet but anyway. Um, and then I went ahead and started by planting some Monte Carlo. Um, I haven't actually kept this plant before so it's a new experience for me for this one but I know that they have a reputation for being pretty hardy and pretty easy to grow so um, they're, they don't look like they're in the best shape, but when I got them, they definitely were not. They don't look much better or worse, so I'm kind of, let's just see how it goes. I'm pretty sure that I can, you know, nurse these things back to health and watch them grow. I know that, you know, moving plants from one environment to another sometimes, you know, you'll have a little die off until it starts regrowing, so I'm expecting to be kind of ugly at first, and then it'll, you know, take its time to regenerate and regrow and get used to the new environment so not not too worried about it and I'm pretty excited to see what the end result will be. I do plan on stocking this tank with the rainbow fry I have. I have a total of six of them right now. Uh, two generations of them actually left. Um, the adults I had unfortunately were victims of my angelfish or at least that's what I'm assuming now knowing that I am down to one angelfish because I'm pretty sure the other one was murdered by this one murderous Angelfish, he's always been really aggressive, so I always knew that that was a possibility, but I figured them sparring every now and then wasn't a big deal, and it was just kind of thing they did, but unfortunately I guess that's one thing you learn, and I probably should have had more than just the two in there, but I, I got them from the same batch, they were, you know, the size of quarters, so they kind of grouped together, I figured it would have been okay, but, you know, I guess it's just another lesson learned, I probably won't ever do that again. But I wouldn't mind keeping more angels, so we'll see what happens there. I've been thinking about getting more once I get my quarantine section all set up and ready. But overall, the 55 is doing great. I did completely rescape it, so I re I took all of the um, the gravel out and I replaced it with some pool filter sand. I moved some of the you know aquascaping um, or the the aquascape stuff I had around, so I moved some of the wood and the rocks over and. You know, I kind of just went with it. I didn't really have anything specific in mind. I just, I knew I wanted to change up how it was and uh, the plants were doing great. So I, I mean, this entire tank, if you remember seeing any pictures of it or in my last videos, it was just overgrown. So I, I had a bucket, like a five gallon Home Depot bucket of plants. I just kind of ended up trashing because I didn't have anywhere else to put them and my other tanks are already kind of full with other plants. So uh, I just, I didn't have a place for them. So these things grow pretty quick too between the um the java fern and the crypts and the temple plants they just they grow like wildfire so uh, it's not a not a big deal to me and then last but not least my quarantine section so this is um where the two 10 gallons housing the beta the cherry shrimp uh the rainbow fry and then the um the 20 gallon with the other uh, generation of rainbow fry my last two guppies um a single molly which I just never ended up getting around to moving to the 55 who's kind of grown out in here and then the mystery snails that I got from a fellow youtuber friend um, I should say fish tuber friend and they're all doing fantastic I haven't had a single problem with any of my freshwater tanks except for losing that one angel that it happened just a couple days ago unfortunately but that was due to aggression it wasn't due to like illness or anything so that's I mean 
I guess there's a silver lining there, if there's any. It was actually rather disappointing since I've been raising them since they were, you know, itty bitty, and it's it's just sad. It's never easy losing a fish, regardless of what it is, but it is what it is, and that kind of happens in this hobby. You know, we all experience this kind of thing one way or another, so. But I'm really glad in the direction that I've been taking with the fish room. The shelves um, that I built are extremely sturdy, so I'm sure if I needed to switch it up at any point, I could. Um, the um, thing, uh, these shelves are actually like they're bolted into the wall, so I think each one can hold several thousand pounds. So in the event that I wanted, you know, even more tanks, and I don't know how I would even fit more in this room. I think I'm kind of at my limit, so I'd have to like get rid of my computer, or my couch, and I don't know if I want to do that. But I'm, I am pretty satisfied at the moment, <laughs> and I think I had to start getting a you know, complaints by by others if I got any more, so. Anyway, I know this video wasn't super in-depth. I Every chance I get, I do try to record something, and I just I sit down and start editing, and just I end up getting busy or caught up in something else. I just don't like how things came out, and it's it takes a lot of time to put one of these videos out, so. But I'm, I would like to start doing more content. It may be, you know, a little bit before I get really back into the rhythm of things, and getting back to doing this on a regular basis just because I'm still working on that app and I still got a lot going on in my life but I will try to be more consistent and not you know make you all have to wait you know several months before I put something out but anyway I hope you guys liked the video um, I know it's been a while so come hit me up in the discord come say hi or say hi in the comments I'd love to hear from you guys see what you're all up to and you know get back into being a bigger part of the YouTube fish community so I hope you all are well. Uh, thanks again for watching, and until next time, fish on, fish fam.